Um, Stefan um, is the network director for Four Networking. Um, if you've not heard of Four Networking, I was just chatting to Stefan earlier on actually, and I thought to myself, have I heard of that? And actually, I suddenly realized, and a number of people that are in that network, um, it's a network for small businesses, very, very, very successful. Um, he's responsible for almost 6,000 network events each year in the UK alone. He's the author of Business Networking for Dummies, um, which I'm sure he's going to discuss with you. Um, in a previous life, uh, Stefan worked as the head of marketing um, for the Guild of Professional Estate Agents. Um, he speaks at many, many events. I've actually seen him myself um, at another event. Um, more recently, he was at the uh, Business Startup Show, I think, from, from memory, presenting there. Um, and he likes to say that he has forgotten that he's too old and too fat to rock. Um, so you'll find him in a mosh pat, uh, pit most weekends. Mush pit, mush pit, mosh pit. Mush pit. <laughs> Clearly not cool enough. Um, so, <laughs> so let me introduce Stefan to you, and uh, hopefully I'm sure he'll be very interesting. Thanks, all. Thank Do you know, I didn't get networking.guru. True story, someone tried to buy it for me as a present and I didn't win it. Um, so the .guru ones are really, really popular. I'm gonna try and get .ninja, I think. If I could get networking.ninja, I think that would work for me. There's me, hi. Um, I'm gonna talk about joining up your online and offline networking because that's something that I'm particularly passionate about. And the fact that I've got the opportunity to speak here today in front of you guys is as a result of me joining up my online and offline networking. Hands up who's here at Google HQ for the first time. Oh, wow. Have you been to the room next door? Make sure you go to the room next door before the end of the day. I'm really excited about being here, and I'm really humbled that my first time here I'm actually speaking. But I joined up my online and offline networking, and that's how I got here. I connected with, with Tim Fuel at the back there on Twitter, at Tim Fuel with double L, connect with him, funny guy. Um, I bumped into him at the business startup show. I kept up the banter with him, and that's what got me to be here and speaking here today, joining up my networking online and offline. And in the last eight years or so, I've done quite a lot of networking. With Four Networking alone, the organization that I represent, I've done now, as of yesterday, 648 networking breakfasts in the last six years. 648 cooked vegetarian breakfasts in six years. It's no accident I got this fat, to be honest. Um, do you know what? That's the best laugh I've ever had for that joke. Five years with the same joke. But I've done a lot of networking, but it wasn't always like this for me. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey in networking and then talk about networking online and offline. Is that all right with you guys? One rule, thank you. If I ask a question, you can answer back, otherwise it gets very lonely up here. Um, I remember my very, very first business networking event. And I went to my first business networking event in late November 2005. And in late November 2005, as you've just heard actually, I'd been an estate agent for about 18 years. Do you know what? I did this same presentation in Newport, South Wales, yesterday, and they obviously don't like estate agents a lot more than you don't like them over there. I got a lot of booze and things thrown at me then. But I, I went to this networking event because I was told it would be a group of local business people sitting around having breakfast and talking about business. And I thought, how hard can that be? How hard can that be? I had my comfort zones in those days, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but estate agency is that archetypal local business. The more other people locally that you know, the more other local businesses that you know, the more chance you've got of, of getting business referred to you. So I thought, how hard can it be going to a business networking event? Just a quick show of hands. How many of you guys go to real life networking events? BNI or for networking or similar? Oh, wow. How many of you do some online networking? Okay. Well, I thought, how hard can it be? And I remember arriving at this networking event and realizing that I had my comfort zones. In estate agency, I was very comfortable sat at my desk with people sat opposite me. I was very comfortable being in other people's houses and talking to them about their, about their house and the value of it. But all of a sudden, I was walking into a room full of people that I didn't know. And if you've ever worked with a life coach or a business coach, you might have been told that it's possible to convince yourself of things and make them really real inside you, even if they're, they're not true. And as I walked into this room, I started to convince myself that everyone else in there would be more confident than me. Anyone else ever felt like that? 
I convinced myself that everyone else had a better business than me. I convinced myself that everyone in there had more money than me, that they had a better car park in the car park than me. I convinced myself that they were all getting more and better sex than me. And I was convincing myself that all of these... There was a ripple. <laughs> it didn't work in Newport either. I don't know why I bothered with it. But I was convincing myself of all of these things, that all of these people were somehow better business people than me and getting more and more nervous. When you go to a networking event, I don't know if you know this, but you have to stand up and do a little 60 second introduction about yourself. Did you guys know that? I didn't the first time I went. So I thought it'd be a good idea if I got you all to do it this morning. Joking, promise. I didn't know the first time I went that you had to do this bit about standing up in front of a group of people. So having convinced myself that all of these people were better business people than me, I was now faced with the fact that I was gonna have to stand up in front of them all and give a 60 second introduction about myself. And the first thing that I knew about this was when Sharon, who was sat opposite me, stood up and introduced herself and introduced her business. And to this day, I don't remember what Sharon said, but I do remember that her presentation was incredibly confident. She had her words absolutely word perfect. She'd done this hundreds of times before. She got all of her words in the right order. She got all of the little jokes in there that everyone was responding to. She had her body language absolutely perfect to deliver, to deliver her points with impact. And she even put her pauses in exactly the right place to make the points that she wanted to make. And Sharon sat down and the person next to her stood up and I started to panic. Because there are a few things in the world that I'm frightened of. Frightened of dogs, actually. Um, I'm frightened of flying in aeroplanes. And I'm very frightened of standing up in front of people who I don't know and presenting. And in the last eight years or so since 2005, I've worked with hypnotherapists and people who help you with presentation skills to get to the stage where I can do this sort of thing. But in those days, I didn't know anything about that. Didn't know anything about that at all. So all that happened when Sharon sat down and the person next to her stood up, was that I stopped listening to what people are saying. Because instead of now listening, I'm now mentally going six, five, four, and counting down to the inevitable moment where I'm gonna have to stand up and do this. And the presentations are getting more and more confident. The in-jokes are getting better and better receptions, much better receptions than my jokes here. But the in-jokes are getting, that was a joke as well, getting better and better receptions as the room warms up. But I'm not listening to what people are saying because at this stage, I'm starting to panic. And if you've ever had a panic attack, my stomach was starting to go in somersaults, my breath had gone really weird, and all the spit went out of my mouth. It's come back, just now. But all the spit had gone out of my mouth. I don't know where it went. But it wasn't just the physical symptoms of the panic that I was starting to experience. It was the, 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 the mental symptoms, for want of a better expression. I was starting to try and make excuses. How do I get out of this room? Do I pretend my phone's ringing? Hello? What, one of the boys is ill at home, I'll come straight away. Do I go off to the toilet and never come back? You're laughing, but I did a four networking event in Prestatin very recently, and a lady went off to the toilet and never came back during that bit where you stand up and introduce yourself. And I felt really sorry for her, because I, I knew exactly how she was feeling at the time. It went round and round the room. The presentations got more and more confident. People were, were really, really getting their stuff right. Eventually, it got to the guy sat next to me, and the guy sat next to me stood up and said, I'm Jamie McIntyre from Abacus Light Bulbs and Batteries. I will beat any price you're paying for your light bulbs and batteries. Tell me what you're paying, and I'll beat that price. In fact, lie to me about what you're paying for your light bulbs and batteries, and I'll beat that price too. Apparently, it's quite accurate. But he did that for 120 seconds. Um, he sat down, I stood up and said, hi, I'm Stefan from Abbey Properties and sat back down again. But I sort of fell in love with business networking. I sort of realized if I stuck with this, that, that something would happen. And this was networking in real life. I didn't discover online business networking until a little bit later. And I started to get the odd lead, the odd referral from it. I had a particular niche. No question about it, niches work very, very well in networking, both online and offline. Thank you, thank you Matt. <laughs> I've done pretty well without my notes so far. <laughs> but um, where was I going with that? Um, but I started to get the odd lead and referral out of it. I dealt with my nerves, I made myself a script so that I could read, um, and I've still got a comfort blanket today, which just so you know, Matt walked off with earlier on. That's what he's just put back on here. Um, got myself a script to, to, to work with and started to get the odd lead. 
Fast forward May the 30th, 2007, eight o'clock in the morning and I got an email. And some of you have had the same email or you've had a letter from your employer's HR department or an invitation to go and see your HR manager and it was the email that tore the ass out of my world. May the 30th, 2007, eight o'clock in the morning. It was the email that meant that by 12 noon I was back at home um, with all of my possessions from my desk the pictures of my kids, the pictures of my Jeep, my own stapler, all of that stuff in a little box. No longer had an income, no longer had a company car, and had to reinvent myself. And I did that thing that a load of people do when they've lost their job, if they've been, been working for a long time. I did that thing and I said, sod this. I'm not going to work for anyone else again. I'm going to go and set up my own business. How hard can that be? Yeah, okay. <laughs> a few of you got that as well. How hard can that be? And I set up a business called No Red Braces. And I realized I wasn't a salesperson. So I carried on with business networking because I saw that as a great route to market for me. Carried on with Whitney Big Breakfast, the event that I'd been at in, in, in November 2005. Joined BNI, found out about something called 4Networking and joined that as well at the end of, of 2007. Um, I was a member of 4Networking for five years before I became a director. But all of a sudden, the energy had changed. Because all of a sudden, having seen this as something medium to long term when I went to my first event, I now had to actually turn a coin. I now had to actually get this working for me. I've done 647, 648 four networking events in that time. On the four networking forum alone, I've made over 18,000 posts and I never advertised my business on there. Um, I learned to use Twitter in early mid-2008, well before that was terribly popular in this country. Facebook in 2007, Google Plus a year or so ago. I got into social media and joining it all up. And having told you where I, come, where I came from, I'm going to give you a few tips as to how you can join up your online and offline networking, if that's all right with you. Because I see a lot of people who go to real life networking, and a load of people get that really right. Generally, real life networking, is easy enough. We know how to talk to people. We know how to chat to people about stuff. Generally, online networking, people get that terribly right as well. But what frustrates me is that there's this really hidden value in joining up online and offline networking, and so few people are getting that right. So few people who go to real life networking are remembering to join up with online networking. So few people who do online networking whether it's on business forums, Google+, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of the hundreds of options you've got, so few people remember to, to join that up with real life networking. And actually joining the two up is where I found the real value. And I'm going to start talking about that by talking about an Evian bottle. Show of hands again, sorry, how many people do either online or offline networking in some way, shape or form? Okay. What words come into your mind when you look at the Evian bottle, which I'm holding up here? Water. Expensive, thank you. Someone always says expensive, and that's really, really relevant. Someone said water. Cool. cool. Any other words? French. French. Pardon? Great. Ah, thank you. You're my stooge, because the red's important. You see, Evian have got a couple of problems. I bought this Evian bottle in um, Boots in Newport. I was trying to remember where I bought it. Bought this Evian bottle in Boots in Newport a couple of days ago. I've been working in South Wales at the beginning of this week. Have you ever been to Newport? Yeah, I wouldn't worry. Um, I bought this bottle in Boots in, in <laughs> Boots in Newport a couple of days ago. And Evian have got a problem because as I walk into Boots and walk up to the refrigerated cabinet, there's an awful lot of bottles of water for sale there. There's Buxton Water, there's all of the other brands. I think Boots have got their own brand. So the very first thing that Evian have got to get me to do when I walk up to that refrigerated cabinet is to take notice of this bottle and to notice this bottle first. Anyone got any idea how they do that? Packaging, specifically? It's the red cap. Exactly so. It's the red cap. There's a couple of reasons for that. All of the other water bottles have got blue caps or grey caps. But someone much cleverer than me told me that, that red is nature's sign for action or nature's sign for danger. So we're hardwired to spot that first. We will notice the red cap first. And then they've got to do something else. Once they've got me to take notice of it, Evian have then got to convince me to pay £1.99 for this bottle of water. 
I drive a lot as part of my, my business, and the bottles of water that I buy to carry in my car, I pay £1.99 in Lidl for 12 bottles. And every have got to convince me to pay £1.99 for this. And they do that with the packaging, as someone just mentioned. Someone said cool as we were going around here. They put the decal of mountains around the top and the pictures of snow-covered mountains on there as well. That's to give you the impression that this comes from a stream somewhere. It actually does come from a stream. There is a village called Evian, but they don't put a picture of the bottling plant on there. And you can be sure that there's a bloody great bottling plant somewhere where they put it all together. They put all of this stuff together to start to convince you once you've noticed it that there's something quality about this. There's something else really subtle about an Evian bottle. The bottle itself is blue, it's not clear. They want to give you the impression that this is somehow from a babbling brook or from a cool lake somewhere, give you the impression that it's very cool water. And there's something else really subtle which you won't see from down there. The pictures of people that they use on here are not people of my age or body shape, frankly. They're young, sporty people. They're young, attractive people. Evian go to all of this trouble to really subtly convince you that if you buy this water and drink this water, you will, at the very least, be associating yourself with people like that. At best, you might turn into someone like that. Maybe I should drink more of it. I, um, and that's what Evian do. Because as I walked into that Boots in Newport, they need to get me to tape, to pay attention to their brand, and then to convince me that that brand is worth paying extra for, that that brand is somehow really, really good quality. I was in an estate agency for nearly 20 years, and I still didn't get a boo. You're very polite here. And in an estate agency, we always had a shop front. If you walk up Corn Street in Whitney in Oxfordshire, you'll see all of the estate agency shop fronts where they're, they're either convincing you that they sell big houses or they're showing you that they sell first time buyers houses or whatever it happens to be. But they use their shop front to show you their brand, to convince you of what their brand is. And when I got into this business networking environment, I suddenly realized that there were a couple of things I didn't have. <coughs> I didn't have the packaging of the Evian bottle. I didn't have that shop front anymore. And I needed to work out a way of getting that across in both my real life networking and my online networking. And you need to do the same. You need to start thinking about what your real USP is, what you're getting out there to people when you're networking online or offline. Think about this for a second. With, with old fashioned business networking and pre-internet, it used to be the case that you could walk into a room and you would be the only estate agent, you would be the only accountant, you'd be the only web designer in the room. Since the internet, and particularly since social media, that's never going to be the case anymore. There will always be another accountant, estate agent, web designer, photographer. No matter what it is you do, there will always be someone else available. You need to think about what your USP is, what your real USP is, what's going to help people to make the decision to buy from you, and get that across in your networking experience, whether that's offline or online. Think about what you say when you stand up at networking events. Think about what you're putting out there on Google+, LinkedIn, Twitter. Think about the information that you're putting out there to help people make the decision to buy from you. Joining it all up. Joining up your online and offline networking. This is a networking event today. All of a sudden, there are all of, these, all of these other businesses in the room that you've got something in common with. And what most people do at networking events, they get pretty right. But where it all goes wrong for a lot of people is how they follow up after the events. Because most people don't bother to do any follow up. Most of you, have most of you got your own businesses or you work for someone else's business or you're in some sort of role where you're promoting something? And it used to be the case when I grew up in sales that you were always told to find something that you've got in common with someone that would give you something to talk about. And all of a sudden you're in a room with all of these other people today and you're going to have the opportunity to network with them over lunch and specifically to network with them after today. And 123Reg have set up a hashtag for example and a really quick tip on networking at shows and events like this, find out what the hashtag is and get involved with it on Twitter. Don't just tweet. Hi, I'm here, hashtag GTH123, I think I remembered that right. Do a search on Twitter and Google Plus for the other people who are tweeting or making posts on Google Plus about hashtag GTH123. 
Go and engage with those people. I've just waved at a firm of accountants in here, by the way. Someone tweeted that they were here, a firm of accountants. Don't know who it was, but I sent them a virtual wave. Make sure you follow up with the people afterwards. <coughs> and connect with them on LinkedIn, Twitter, or wherever, wherever it happens to be. Someone sent me an email the other day and said they do a load of networking events and they always follow up with people, but they never ever get a response and it doesn't work for them. And I asked them to show me how they were follow following up with people afterwards. And they sent me a copy of an email that they were using. And it basically said, it was lovely to meet you this morning, David. Now here is 800 words in an email about what I do and what you should buy from me. How many of you read emails like that if you receive them? And how many of you click immediately on delete? Yeah. If it's not going to work for you, if someone sends it to you, why are you doing that sort of thing afterwards? Why are you sending people stuff that says, lovely to meet you, now buy from me. Buy my stuff. Here I am. This is what I do. Think about when you're connecting with people after networking events, after events like this, move on to their turf. Look at the things that are of interest to them and talk about that instead. Look at their website. Look at their blog. Take the time to find out about the other people. In old-fashioned traditional sales, you would always have found out about the other people first before you go in and sell. I live in a little village in Oxfordshire called Aston, just outside Whitney. And Mick, who lives next door, sells carpets for a living. Steve, who lives in Church Lane and is my cousin. Um, it's a village in Oxfordshire. Everyone's my cousin. Um, Steve mends computers for a living. But when we meet up at village events, Mick doesn't immediately ask me if I want a carpet fitted. Steve doesn't ask me if I need any PCs or laptops repaired this week. When we meet up at events, we talk about stuff. We talk about the fact that the pub in the village has shut down, what's going on with everyone's family, how's your daughter Mick, does she know who the father is yet? We talk about stuff. <laughs> o Oxfordshire village joke that I don't get away with actually on, on my home turf. But, but we talk about stuff. And yet people think that somehow it's all right to go online because it's online. And instead of talking about stuff just to start, st start selling straight away, don't do it. Move on to other people's turf. Find out what's of interest to them. Get them interested in you. Get a connection with them. Tim Fuel is devastated that he can't make the Boy George Art exhibition today. That's a little thing that, 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 that I know about him. Tim Fuel and I both like Boy George. That might say something a bit more about us than it says about anything else. But talk about stuff. Don't just sell all the, all the time. I see too many Google Plus streams, Twitter streams, where people are just selling. When you've met people at a networking event, you've got the ideal opportunity to connect with them. You've got something in common with them. But find out more about them and talk about that instead, rather than just talking about your stuff. Very final thought. Never ever underestimate the other people that you're networking with, whether it's in real life or online. People very often say to me, yeah, but I met him, I chatted to him, but he wasn't going to be any use to my business, so I won't bother with him. I met, um, I met someone called Kathy at a networking event in 2009. It was um, just outside Abergavenny in South Wales. And, and Kathy was a self-employed HR consultant. And Kathy and I met, we had a one-to-one, -one. we had a conversation, and, and after a few meetings and conversations, she became a client of my business, No Red Braces. And I was doing all of her writing for her, helping her with her, her emails and her blogs and so on, and as a self-employed copywriter, she was paying me 200 pounds a month. And that was quite good business for me in those days, actually. That was really, really worthwhile. But after about six months, I got a call from Kathy again to say, I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm winding up the business. And I thought things had been going well, so we had a chat about it, and it turned out that Kathy had been headhunted. And Kathy had been headhunted back into her first love, which is retail, because before being a self-employed HR consultant in South Wales, Kathy had been HR director for a large-ish company called Next, and prior to that, she had been operations director for Hamleys. And she had a massive love and massive experience in retail, and had been headhunted back into a national retailer. And I was really happy for her, because she was a friend, but it was really devastated for me because it was a client I could have done without losing. But about six months after that, Kathy picked up the phone to me again. We'd kept in touch on Twitter and LinkedIn, and she picked up the phone to me again and said, no, I won't say what she said. She said, I'm in a pickle, colloquially, words to that general effect. I'm in a pickle. I've got a new store opening in Cardiff next Tuesday. This was Thursday afternoon. I need someone who can stand and present to our new store staff in Cardiff from a script which we'll provide. She said, I know you can do it. 
I know it's well out of your comfort zone. Um, it's a thousand pounds a day plus expenses. That long, it took me by the way. Um, and I, I turned up, did that day's work for, for Barrett's Shoes, the, the, the company was, and as a result of that, got three or four days a month work from them for the next 18 months or so. And I got really excited in my little business networking organization where we've got a reputation and people tell us that there's only ever small businesses there. I got really excited and posted on the forum that I'd won this massive client with five and a half thousand employees across the UK. Nine people contacted me by email, by email, to say, can you introduce me to whoever buys this at Barrett's, who's responsible for that, whoever does that, does that at Barrett's. Five of them I'd met in real life, four of them I'd never met, but approached me by email saying, can you introduce me to your best client? That was an interesting approach to take. Out of the five that I'd met, one of them had turned Kathy down for a one-to-one -one meeting after a networking event. No thanks, I've got my HR sorted out, I don't need to talk to you. When she was a small business, he had no interest in talking to her. All of a sudden, now she had pound notes over her head, he was very, very interested in meeting her. Never underestimate the other people around you, whether it's at real life networking or online networking. You never know who they used to be. The Guild of Professional Estate Agents with 700 independent estate agency offices around the UK. That was me, 2000 to 2003. You never know who people are connected to in, in this life or who they might go on to become in the future. After a really, really shaky start back in late November 2005 at my first ever networking event, I sort of fell in love with business networking, and it's now something that I do an awful lot of. Um, I'm very proud to be the author of Business Networking for Dummies. You've all got a free chapter inside your, back, inside your bags, which you're very, very welcome to. But I fell in love with this environment because I was always told that in any other sales environment, if I approached you and cold called you and got a knockback, that I would only ever get that one chance to make a first impression. And this was the only ever sales environment I'd been in where I got a second chance, or even with four networking, a 648th chance to make a first impression. That's all I've got. Thanks very much for listening.